What is up, guys and gals? It's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose, back in the garage and back with a little more Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. All right, so today is part two of our 1932 Ford build using the model by Felicix. And today, before we get started, I want to go ahead and help a couple of you guys out with how you get cars into the game. I've gotten several emails already with people saying, how did you get that car? How did you get it in the game? So I'm going to walk you through the whole process real quick, help you out so that you can see exactly what you need to do. All right. So step one, let's jump over into Steam. We're going to come over here to Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Click on it, then come to this side and you'll see the word discussions. Let's hit that and go over to the forums. And then we're going to come to the right side under the sub forums. We're looking for modding forum. If we click on that, you're going to see a lot of pinned messages in here. These are folks who already have cars built for the game and they are putting them up here for you to download. Like if we go into here, you'll see that there is a 1995 Ford Mustang. There's a 1969 uh, Camaro. Uh, there's a Boss 302 here for you. So a lot of different cars that you can download. The links are right up above them. Now, the one that we're looking for is Felicix. 1932 Ford update. That's right here. Click on it. Come down. You'll see the links down here for the information for the downloads. You can get a zip or a non zip version. You can download that however you want to. And of course, there's information here about it. You can also read about the project. People who have questions, you might read through there if you have any questions as well. All right, so we download that. Once we have downloaded that, we need to go to our computer and we need to find that file. Now for me, I've got that file right here as a zip. Now I use WinZip, WinRAR, whatever you want to do to unzip that so it becomes a folder like this. Or if you downloaded the non-zip version, you'll have a folder that looks like this. It will have the name of the car and then inside of it, it's going to have another folder with the name of the car. Very important you pay attention to this file structure. If I double click on that, then here are all the parts, the configurations, everything is right in here. Very important, follow this file structure, okay? Go back one folder so that you're at the folder that contains the parts. Copy that folder. Don't copy the original folder, right? This has got a folder inside of a folder, like a little nesting doll. You don't want that one, okay? So again, go into the master folder, then the folder that contains the parts, that's the one we wanna copy, copy it. Once you've copied that, then we're gonna need to go back into Steam. We'll go to our library and we're gonna right click on the name of the game. Go to properties, local files, browse local files, and inside of here, you're gonna see a folder called CMS 2018 underscore data. Double click on that. Go to streaming assets, double click on that. Go to cars, and this is where you find all the cars for the game. And this is where you need to paste the file that you just copied so that inside this list of games, you see a folder for Felicix 32 Ford. And if you've done it right, when you double click on that, all the parts are inside. If you double click on it and you see another folder for Felicix 32 Ford, you grab the wrong folder. All right. Very important that you place it in there properly because the game is not going to dig through all the subfolders to find the files. So make sure you only put one file that says 32 Ford and all the parts are on the inside of it. Once you've done that, you're good to go. You just launch the game and you're ready to play. Now, once you're in the game, the only real way for you to verify that the car is actually in the game and ready to go is go to your tablet and then go to the body shop and verify that the parts are there to support that particular car, right? So if we go to the body stop, and you'll see right off the top for me, the 1932 Ford parts are in the top of it. That's how I verified that the car was in the game. That's the only way I can do it. I, there, I know there's a car menu in the, in the main menu system uh, where you can go look at all the cars, but those are the licensed cars that are a part of the game. Mods don't show up in there. So 
really the only way for you to verify that you installed it correctly and you have it is just go look in the body spot and see if all the parts are there. If they're there, you know the car's in the game, you can start going to the junkyard or wherever you need to go to try to buy it. All right. So anyways, I hope that guy helped you guys out for how to get mods into the game and um, yeah, answered a few questions for you. I know it's not the easiest process, uh, but it's the process we have right now. They are, from what I understand, working on a Steam Workshop and once that's implemented, it'll be a much simpler process, not only for you to put the car in the game, uh, but for the modders to update their mods and uh, keep them fresh. So. Anyways, back to our project and working on our 1932 Ford today. Now we get to build the motor, which is, you know, what everybody enjoys doing in the game is building the motor. I mean, it's the hot and soul of the car, right? Anyways, let's go ahead and start getting some parts off here and we shall get going. So anyways, hope everybody enjoyed yesterday's video and uh, had a good time. Let me look at this so I can actually see what I'm doing off the front of the motor. Helps if you take the fan off first there, Lucy. I got a bit ahead of myself. All right, supercharger off. And serpentine belt B off. We can start taking all these pulleys and all of these pumps off. Yeah, I was a little, um, I talked to some people last night in my live streams and just verified. I was a little concerned about the fact that yesterday's video was really short. Um, you know, there are some people who want to come in and they just want to see start to finish. They want to see exactly how the car turned out. They could care less about the build process. I know that. But at the same time, there are those who want to see the build. They want to see, you know, everything that it took to get that car. And that's the way I am. I want to see how you how you found the car uh, and what was involved in rebuilding it all the way from start to finish. Nuts and bolts, everything. And um, so that's the way I do my videos. And, you know, I don't want them to be too extremely long because I do get a lot of people who will complain about how long the videos are. Um... So I keep that in the back of my mind. Um, so looking at the clock, I just realized it was going to be a really long video if I continued on. So I did a shorter one and, you know, I'll take my hits for it being a two part video, but I think that's the best way to do it. So that shall be the future of all videos on this channel. Uh, let's take the cam out real quick and then we'll rotate the engine. There we go. So now that we can look at the bottom of it, no oil pan on it, of course. And it looks like <laughs> no rod, no rod caps. No connecting rod caps. Oh, there's one. <laughs> one rod cap out of the whole thing. That's pretty funny. And the cam looks like it was held on by one cap as well. I mean, the crankshaft. There we go. So somebody was uh, questioning how you put motors on the engine stand. And I want to go over this real quick. Because it's really... Some of this is kind of silly, okay? If you pull a an engine from the car and you put it on the engine stand... You'll notice that that engine is there all the time now with the transmission, all that, you know, silhouette there. That silhouette is there. There is no way for me to unload that silhouette now without at least a part on there. So at least the engine block has to be on there. So now if I go back and I put the engine block back into this uh, using the assembly process, right? I go put the engine block off there now i can come in here and i can take that engine off of the block and the stand is free if i want to build an engine on the stand i can't just go grab an engine block and throw it up on the stand i have to have what is considered an engine blueprint so if we look in my inventory 
you'll see that I have an engine blueprint here. V8, two carb, overhead cam, supercharged motor. And it shows that it's got the dipstick, the oil, um, the drain plug and the filler cap and the, the, and the block. That is enough for it to register as the blueprint for that engine. I can put the blueprint for an engine up there, but I cannot put just an engine block up there. The game doesn't let me do that. It needs to know what it's building. So it needs to know what is the what are the parts that are required for this for this engine ahead of time. Then you can come up here to the engine and I can go ahead and right click and I can add it because it still sees that engine is in my inventory and it will load it onto the stand and then I can disassemble or reassemble it. But it's it's very important that you understand that the game works off of like a blueprint system and it needs to know what the blueprint is that you're building so that it knows what parts to register for that particular build. Um, so yeah, and that blueprint system also determines what parts you get. Someone else wrote uh, in the comments that I put the wrong push rods in an engine. Uh, recently uh, it was on the Corvette build and he wrote that I should have bought the V8 push rods um, actually I did get the right push rods because if I hadn't have purchased the right push rods I don't know what I'm doing I'm sitting here mumbling and not paying attention if I had to purchase the wrong push rods I would have ended up with uh, the game wouldn't have let me put them in there um, there, there's three types of push rods. There's the regular push rods. There's the I6 push rods. And then there are V8 overhead valve F push rods, which are for the Dodge engines. The Dodge and the Mazda cars have different parts than everybody else do because they're DLCs and, you know, their parts are specific to the DLC. So anyways, hey, so there was a new update today and look at here. They fixed the font finally for the sort menus ah, how about that about time um anyways let's go ahead and look through our parts that we need going to need for this build alternator is good we we'll always need to buy the cam gear the cam shaft is good uh we need a carburetor times two uh our crankshaft is good that is good we have one good crankshaft bearing so we need two more uh, the crankshaft pulley, always going to replace that. We got a bad engine block, though. Two good heads, that's good news. Um, let's see, the gearbox for... Uh, we don't need to worry about that now. Uh, of course, pistons and rings are going to get replaced. Power steering pump is good. The radiator fan is good. We got one rod cap. Uh, we'll need serpentine belts a b and the supercharger belt the supercharger's bad that's not good the intake manifold for the supercharger is bad uh we need a supercharger water pump pulley make sure we pay attention to that it's different from the regular water pump pulley uh then we need a timing chain timing chain cover is bad and the water pump is good all right with all that said, we need to go over here and see what I got in the warehouse so we don't have to spend a fortune in the store. And we'll see if we can salvage a few things. See, you'll see here, here's a complete engine, or it's not a complete engine, all it is is an engine block. But this is an engine that I've got sitting in here, or engine blueprint, for a V8 one carb overhead valve engine. Uh, it's one that I had as a spare after stripping a car down. So anyways, so you'll see that and you see it's got the little blueprint like icon behind it that lets you know that it's it's not actually a part. It's a blueprint. So uh, I refer to it as a blueprint. That may not be the technical term that the game uses. But anyways, I think you guys can understand that by me using that sort of terminology. All right, so I'm not going to search specifically for the engine. I'm going to go through the parts because it'll be easier for me to maybe spot some things that we need. Like right off the bat, we know we need one of those uh, because it didn't have a distributor and it didn't have uh, any of the distributor parts. I know that I need a ignition button. Uh, let's see, fuel pump we don't need. Uh, we don't need a cam or any of that. You know what? I should probably grab one of those out of there. 
uh, because I don't know if we're going to need one or not later. Let's look, keep looking through here for just the different parts that would possibly go on this motor. I know we need like valve covers. I guess I could have supported, I, I could have sorted by engine. That would have helped out. Full pan for an I-6. Uh, let's see, clip A, no, I don't need that. I do need some clip Bs. Man, I'd love to be able to use that carburetor, but unfortunately you can't use performance parts. Let me do go ahead and hit engine. Because this is going to take a long time if I have to go through all the um, body parts. We'll get back into this now. And sometimes I just don't think to hit that button, you know. Uh, let's see. I6 in Japan. Intake manifold to carb. That's not what we need. We need the supercharger and I need a timing cover for a V8 overhead valve. That's for the V8. Uh, what do we got here? That's just a regular two banger. That's for a Dodge because it's got the F on the side of it. Um, God, I feel like I'm missing something here. I should have plenty of parts for this engine. That's a V8. I need the overhead valve. Should have a block in here too. Am I just not paying attention and missing stuff or what? If I don't get it on the first pass, I'll look up V8 overhead valve and go from there. But there's a couple of things that I'm looking for that may not show up on that like rod caps should have more rod caps than that but ah uh, there's the engine block and there's a crankshaft what else have we got in here alternator was good there's a carburetor there's another crankshaft bearing so now we got plenty of crankshaft bearings there's some more rod caps um, let's see. I know you're probably wondering why I don't take this, the, the, um, there's another carburetor. There's an exhaust manifold. There's another rod cap. There's a B clip. Aha. Now we're starting to get into the parts I need. Uh, starter V8 I need. All right. Well, that was everything I needed that is in there. I'm, I'm sure. All right, so now let's look. I've got one, two, three, four, five rod caps now, six rod caps. So I need two rod caps uh, when we do this. We still didn't have a timing chain cover. That's kind of stinker. Um, I would have thought I would have had the valve covers, uh, but I don't. I've got enough crankshaft bearings. I've got a couple carbs now. I need one clip B. All right, let's go shopping. We got a list now in my head, which I know drives people nuts, but it is what it is. All right, so let's just kind of scroll through here and buy things as I see them that I uh, know that I need now. So first thing we're gonna come to is the cam gear. Uh, we need one of these. Yep, so we'll go ahead and get that. Uh, coming down here, we don't need a carburetor anymore. We got that. We do need a clip B for the distributor. I did pick one of those up. We need the crankshaft pulley for the overhead V8. Uh, we are going to need some valve covers. We're going to need this one and we're going to need this one. And we are going to need an exhaust manifold, I'm sure. A fuel filter. What else makes sense? That makes sense. I think I got the cap and the button. So we're good there. Probably need a set of V8 wires. Uh, we're gonna need an oil filter for sure and an oil pan. So where's the oil pan at? It's over here. And then we need eight of these as always. 
Boom. And eight more of these. Boom. Radiator stuff. We'll worry about that in a little bit. Uh, we need 16 of these guys. Uh huh. And two of these. Uh, then we get down here. We need two of these air filters. Serpentine belt A, we need, and we need serpentine belt B. Uh, then we need eight spark plugs. I know one thing I overlooked a second ago. I'll have to go back and get it. The supercharger we need, the intake manifold, and we need the belt. We need the water pump pulley. Uh, then we need the timing chain and the timing chain cover. So we need that and timing chain for V8 overhead valve. We need 16 push rods, I have 15 more because I purchased one by accident. Quick trigger finger. Um, and that is all of that. But the one other thing that I need that I overlooked was the ignition coil. I'm sure it's Colby. Um, and that should be everything that we need for the motor fingers crossed anyways may need a scoop on it i didn't think about that all right back we go to assembly mode put her together all right get over here crank chef goes in and it's time to throw in the crank chef bearings Here we go. All right, so swing around up here and we'll go ahead and slide all our pistons in. Try and get this in the right order today. And again, I tried to build the engines as realistic as possible. You, I know you can sit over here and put all of the, uh, you can put all of this stuff together without swinging around the engine and rotating the block and everything else like that. But I just like doing it more realistic. So I'm not gonna sit here on this side of the engine and put the, you know, click on that and put it in. And I know I don't have to rotate the motor to do it, but it's the way I wanna do it, so. All right, let's come up here. Somebody's like, this guy takes this way too seriously. It's just a game. It is, it's just a game. But it's, uh, you know, it's how you play the game. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable, right? Brings back memories too when you do it this way. If you've ever, if you, you know, ever built one, it brings back memories of, you know, when you were in shop or when you built one with your dad or whatever, you know. Here we go. Now we put that on there. Let's go ahead and next thing to put in is going to be the cam and we'll put the cam gear on and we'll put our timing chain on as we well go ahead and put that on we were talking about this some friends and I were talking about this the other day who are either trained mechanics or have done mechanical work in the past one of the things we were talking about, we wish they had was more of the tools that you use, like the pull, the puller to pull your harmonic balancer off of here. Uh, the puller for it has a little wing that you put bolts through, and then it has a bolt through the center that you screw in. And as it, as you put more pressure on the, the crankshaft, it pulls the pulley off of it because there's a keyway 
in the um, in the crankshaft, and there's a little you know key in there that holds it in place. And we were talking about it'd be cool if they had a model of that in there as well. So you actually you know had to walk over to your bench, get your harmonic balancer puller, put that on there, put the bolts into it, and then screw it in until the um, until the harmonic balancer came off the car. To me, that's, uh, you know, that's another missed opportunity where they could add a little bit more into the game. Just like doing ring squeezing, you know, you when you put your when you put your pistons together and you put all your rings in there, there's an alignment technique that you do on your rings because you have three grooves and your rings have a little, you know, where they come together. They get that little gap. You have to offset that gap on your rings. Otherwise, the oil can leak through there if you put them all in a, in a row. So, you, you know, you tilt them. You put them 180 degrees out of whack of each other. And then you have to put the whole thing into a squeezer that looks like a little sleeve um, with a ratchet on it. Some of them are different. Mine had a ratchet on it. Some of them have a... Uh, just have a lever that you pull in um, but anyways you you put that sleeve around the piston ratchet it up then you put it in and then you you know ooh, god man the glare on that uh, and then you actually put the piston in so it'd be cool if things like that those those little shop tools if they were um, if they were modeled into the game then you've got other things like if you're just doing a, a, re, a restore on a car like if you're just like maybe you had a bearing or something go out you're doing a rebuild on the car but you're not replacing all of the um the pistons and everything like the pistons look good maybe you have one piston where the crank uh where the connecting rod came loose or broke right at the piston or the piston failed like I've had this happen before. I had a piston fail in an engine where right underneath the oil seal uh, or the ring for the oil seal, the, the, the rest of the piston just came apart. The dress or skirt of the piston just actually came apart right underneath that, that last ring and it slid down the connecting rod. It didn't do any damage to the cylinder. Uh, so I got really lucky on that. As soon as it happened, I shut the engine off and had the engine towed back to the house. Um, and then I tore the engine down and found that valve, or I, or I tore the engine down and I found where that one um, piston had gone bad. And I was able to rebuild that whole thing. But there's an actual tool when you... If you want to go ahead and rebuild the engine, but you're going to save most of your pistons, there's actually a tool to clean all the, the slots on the rings out. So you pull your rings out, you run that thing in there, and it takes all the grime out of there so that when you put the new rings in, they seat even better. So, I mean, they miss, tool, they, they miss opportunities to add stuff like that into the game that would just add that little bit more realism to it. It'd be cool. I'm just saying. It'd be cool. Some people don't have... I mean, like, Not everybody's going to have stupid tools like that. The, the reason I had all those tools was... <laughs> my dad bought them at some auction somewhere. He was notorious for just buying lots of stuff that he had no idea what was even in the lots but when we got it home he'd be like oh well we can use that on a on a project one day all right all right in goes the exhaust manifold come around to the top Let's go ahead and build the front of the motor out. Hang some hardware out here. So yeah, when you put this on, not just this bolt holds this crankshaft pulley in place. There's a keyway 
uh, cut into the face of the, the crankshaft. So you have to put the key in there and line up the harmonic balancer, shove it in there, and then you put the bolt into it. Uh, let's see. Water pump goes in. We're gonna put that on. Oh, we don't bolt that up. Okay. All right, whatever. That's the first for me. Well, I guess that's true too, because the actually the fan on on a lot of them the fan holds the pulley in place, so you don't bolt that in. I didn't think about that. If you do have a fan that's driven off of the water pump, the fan actually holds the um, the water pump pulley on. That's that's correct. Got to take a second to remember. Think about some of the car motors I've built over the years. And she supercharges it. All right, so let's get back to the front here. Come on, back to the front. Back to the front. So we put the belt on. And we go ahead and put that belt on. And we go ahead and put that belt on. That's good. So I guess I, you know, technically I wouldn't do that until it was in the car because um, I wouldn't put those belts and everything on. If if the water pump pulley wasn't held in place, all right, let's get these little clips in. If the water pump pulley wasn't held in place by bolts, then I wouldn't put all that on there until I got it in the car because I wouldn't put the fan on until I got the car, that in the car. We've talked about all that. But... So we don't destroy it. So this doesn't have a scoop on it. I would have thought that he would have built a motor with a scoop on it. But I guess since he has a hood on the car, that would have... Oh, it does have an air scoop. Oh, cool. I'm gonna need an air scoop. I don't have an air scoop. Scoop, 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 scoop. There it is. Oh, that's a bad looking little motor, isn't it? That's a bad looking little motor. All right, let's put it in our pocket. We'll get this guy and put it in place. <laughs> put the motor in your pocket and walk around the garage with it. You're so strong, you can carry your motor in your pocket, but you can't put it in the engine without a lift. Put it in the car without a lift. Boom. There it sits. All right. Raise her up. And let's go to the store and buy a couple more little parts that we need. Uh, let's go to Gearbox. Gonna need one of these, one of those, one of them right there. That should be good. Is our exhaust system fully made it up? It is. That's excellent. Flywheel goes in. Plate. All right. Let's get these last little bits on here. Oh, now it's getting time for the big reveal when we do the uh, little body work on this and see what she turns into. This is probably what everybody wants to see. I mean, the engine build's cool uh, for a lot of people, but at the end, it's like, what's it going to look like? How's it going to turn out?
I gotta be honest with you, I started to go in and do a custom design for it uh, in Photoshop and make make the ZZ Top Eliminator, but then I was like, well, it's, it's not really that car. All right. So, oops, I forgot to do one thing while I was under there. Stupid me. Just shot into my head. Gotta put that oil, pump, uh, oil uh, filter in. There we go. Now we can finish up on the front side of this. Do we have a fan? Oh, do you know? Let's go ahead and take these fenders off so that we can get to the engine that much easier. Don't know if I have a fan or not. That might have been one thing. I, oh, I do have one. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, the engine had one when we took it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm remembering. I'm old. What can I say? My brain's not that good. <laughs> so somebody said in the comments the other day, it was like that because I was talking about, you know, making shopping lists and everything. And they were like, well, the addition to uh, not making a shopping list, it helps work your brain out. I'm like, yeah, because my brain needs it because it's fried. <laughs> I mean, look, I can't even remember what the value of a car was in that stupid Corvette video. It still haunts me. I'm still getting yelled at on that one. I got so sidetracked thinking about all the missing parts and everything that I looked at the price and got it wrong. And it was like, oh, I lost $8,000. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, it was like, you ought to take that video down. It makes you look stupid. I'm like, nah, mistakes were made. I'm leaving it up. You know, you can't, you know, mistakes get made. All right. Uh, a little filler cap action here. Put a wool in this baby. Derper, 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 derper. And there we go. Done. Where's the dip at? Check the dip. Actually, we need to run the engine just a little bit before you check the dip. But anyways, it looks good. Because you got to circulate a little bit of oil through the oil filter before you check your levels. All right, so we are to that magical point in the build. Let's get rid of some trash out of here. So all our junk, boom. And um, the rest of this stuff can be sold as well. All right, let's start stripping some body panels off of this thing. This is what makes this car look. Cause there's a Roadster right there. Uh-huh. Then if you wanted to do a hot rod, you know, a true Roadster, you could take all that off of there. Oh yeah. Very cool. All right. Uh, I think there's a trunk. There is a um, rear bumper here. And then the trunk with the big reveal. This thing's got some serious kickers in it. <laughs> Who cares about the engine? We're going to thump our way down the road. This next thing is going to have hydraulics in it. Yeah. <laughs> no body panels to repair. Oh, so we're buying it. Wait a minute. Update. There we go. Now let's try that again. Nope, still nothing to repair. So I guess everything is so pathetically damaged that you can't repair. But I don't understand that because I thought anything that was over 15%, you got a chance to repair. So that kind of stinks because that, those two pieces right there, we should have had a chance. A lot of these pieces, we should have a chance to repair. I don't know, maybe the table doesn't recognize those body parts. That's a possibility. Um, that the, the game doesn't recognize that at the table. No, it does recognize that at the table because I think I've, uh, 
I think I repaired a couple parts up that I found in the junkyard. Let me look real quick. Because I, remember I told you I went around and I picked a bunch of parts for this particular car trying to find it. And um, um, yeah, I don't see anything. So 19, or actually just look forward up. Okay, so maybe I didn't have any extra parts. All right, well, that just means we're gonna have to go buy a bunch of parts. Let's go ahead and move this guy over because we definitely need to use it. And we need to move this guy over there as well. So but before we do anything else to it, I guess we ought to look at what the value of the car is. Remember, it was just over $4,000 when we first started working on this car. Uh, it's now twenty three thousand nine hundred ninety four dollars. So, and the global body condition on it is junk. So let's go ahead and hit it with this. Boom! She's starting to take shape now, and now it's worth twenty four thousand eight hundred twelve dollars. And a little detail in here for a hundred bucks. Yeah, and now we are at. What are we at now? 24, 8, 12, same thing. All right, but man, it is, uh, oh, I don't like that red. I did buy an ugly car, didn't I? All right, parts inventory. Let's go to the shop and buy everything for this car because that's what we need. To the body spot. And everything's right here at the top, but just to make sure I filter it down, let's go 1932. There we go. I've already got the bumper purchase, so we'll get one of these, one of those, one of them, one of those, one of them. All right, should be everything we need. All right, so let's put her together and make it into a complete car here. So we need those. And that. And a door. So unfortunately, the things I've looked at with this car, the way it's built out, he's done an amazing job with it. So let me just state that. Oops, I got the wrong one there. He's done an amazing job with this car, and, and, and he dealt with the limitations of the game, right? So, the things that he had to do to make it work are what they are. With that said, I hate the fact that the headlamps are mounted to the fenders, and you don't have an option to mount them to the frame. It would have been nice if he had to give you two different versions. Uh, one mounted to the frame and one mounted to the head. To the fenders because if you're doing the full rebuild like this um it looks it's acceptable right but if i wanted to do like a take some of the body panels off and make it a little bit different i could uh, i could put the headlamps on it and have them mounted to the frame instead of to the um, to the fenders anyways let's go pick a suitable paint job for this car and make it look kind of nice so it was uh it was some sort of red there were some fixes to the paint booth in this patch uh that just came out that will resolve some of the issues with the paint booth that people were having Ooh, like a purple might be cool on this Let's see, you got black. We could go with a purple. Uh, to me, like a purple on this car would be kind of cool. Yeah, something in that nature might be cool. Uh, what else could you do? You could do like a gray would be cool. Something purple, though, is, is just in my mind, and I don't know why. 
I mean, of course, you got red. You could do a deep red, or you could do like a, a dark red. I do red on everything, though, so I don't want to do a red car again. I want to take a break from the red. So let's try and get that purple back in there, or a blue. Saw an interesting, like an aqua. Nah, I'm liking the purple. I'm liking purple. Let's go with it. I can't change that interior color, unfortunately, but. Hmm. Oh, I just screwed that up. Hit the wrong button. That's looking pretty good. That's promising. That blue might be better than the purple. I'm liking that. Done deal. Oh, we have a paint animation. That's what they put in. And a new sound as well. I'm going to do that again just for giggles. <laughs> it's only a thousand bucks per trigger. I mean, one more time. Nice. It's nice they added that in there, though. Instead of just tink, it's done. So cool. Hmm. This side looks black. Let's get it out in the light and see what we got. Oh, you know what we should have looked at real quick? Hang on. Before we go anywhere. Let's see what kind of liveries this thing had. Oh, none. He didn't do any up. All right. Well, that answers that. Didn't know if he had his easy top livery in there or not. Uh, let's move this out by the front door so we can get a look at it. Because that's where the lighting seems the best in the shop for me is out here by the door look at that man that is a bala that is sharp now we still got to do the interior on it so let's do the disassembly on the interior oh no is that really what i just saw hashtag front bench Oh, that might not be good. Bench bandit. Okay. Cool. So that means, um, it, it, like, if you were doing jobs, the reason I kind of got a little worried there is in the beginning of this game, when you were doing jobs and you got hashtag front bench, it was usually an error in the game and you couldn't get past it. Anyway, so let's go into inventory uh, or into the shop and we need to go to the customs shop And or interior shop bench bandit is what was in there Are there any versions of it other than black? Uh, let's get bandit Nope Hmm Oh well We'll buy the matching steering wheel to go along with it. And let's put that back into the car. Assembly mode. Put that in there. Put our steering wheel in. Nice. Now look, that acted like there's a, a panel right there as well. It's like it almost looks like there's a steering column to put in here and that fire extinguisher are they actually in the car let's uh let's go back to normal mode yeah they're in there we should be 100 percent on everything now global body condition 84 percent there uh we don't have the license plate on it and I'm just wondering, can you take these out? No, I can't take them out. Hmm. Interesting. 
I hate that menu system. I really do. Why the escape is not the escape, I, I do not know. Oh, you know what? I'm, did I put the windows in? Yeah, that might be what I'm missing. Put that window in, that window in. That window is part of that. Let's look at it now. 89%. There's still something not right. I don't know what he, this is right here. I don't know if he was that was supposed to be like the, the rubber running board or something, or he just never modeled that in. Um, but that part of it is there. I just don't know what else to put on this to get it up to 100%. Everything is installed body-wise. Everything's been repaired body-wise. So I don't know why well, I don't have the license plates on it. Nah. Uh, it seems sinful to put license plates on this thing. Come on. All right, so. We'll buy that one. Uh, and then we'll buy a uh, license plate for the front. I started to customize it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'd put something really stupid on there. All right, so we'll put that one on the front. And we'll put that one on the Mac. Let's see what that does for us. There we go. Stupid license plates. And there she sits. Such a beauty. Nice little car. I'm going to take a screenshot real quick. Um, let's see. What else can we do to this? All right. So the different variations of this car now. Well, let's say we didn't want it like this. We wanted to take off the fenders. And then we sort of got a rat rod there. We could take the top off of it. And there's a little bit of a coupe version. Of course, to really make it into a roadster, we got to take that off of it. So you got all different views of it. And then you could take the fenders off of it and the hood off of it and run it like it, it, you need some support bars that went from here to here, uh, of course. But do we put the brakes? It seems a little low for the brake servo to be mounted in there, but yeah. So this kind of, I don't know, without those nice chromed out support rails running from here to here it's sort of lacking a little bit on that so let's put the hood back on it and it needs that poly hood from uh from greece you know that see-through poly hood that greece had in the movie when they were building the grease lightning it needs that That's what we should have did. We should have bought, uh, painted it black with the uh, with the little bolt on it. <laughs> yeah, see, this is where I'd like to have the lights be able to mount right here to the frame rails, right? Because if you if you see any coupes that are fenderless coupes, the headlight kit that you get for it mounts to the frame right here. And that would be super, super cool to be able to assemble that. But again, in order to do it, you have to put the um, the fenders on, which the fenders are listed as the trunk tail light. And then you can put the headlamps back on it. Well, sort of like that look. That's pretty cool right there. I do think the wheels work with it. The wire rims. I like that. Shop. Let's take a screenshot of that. That'll be our thumbnail. That'll be our thumbnail for this car. Anyways, so I wonder if I can drive it in this condition, if it'll let me take it for a drive. We're going to try. We're going to try to go to the airport with it. Oh, it let me drive it this way. 
Sweet! Oh, that's cool. So I haven't been out to this uh, new track that they put in at the airport, so I don't even know what it looks like, but looks like it's pretty just bland. Let's look at our car here. Will she lay a peel? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, she's a hot rod. Oh, the, the engine's so loose. No, 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 no. Stay out of the wall. So this is the new, uh, basically, bonus track that they added in the game. Which just gives you free run to do whatever you want on, I guess. Our little deuce cube. Let's go ahead and hit that button there. All right, guys. Uh, as I was trying to say, and you probably couldn't hear me because the engine's so loud in it. Uh, make sure you smack that like button for me. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, as always, come on back for some more. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Remember, if you haven't entered the drawing for this Friday, make sure you put something in to the uh, comments uh, to the event of, you know, hey, congrats on 31K, and I'd like to win CMS 18. If you do that on Friday, I'll put all the names together and draw out a winner, and somebody's going to get a free copy of uh, Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. All right? Till our next video, everybody, stay safe. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for all the support. God bless you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.